This is me, working at my real-life desk for my real-life job, where I do holistic retirement planning. No, being the world's worst engineer is not my primary source of sustenance. It's more of a hobby than anything else. Although you, the viewer, don't hear too much about my real job, I very much enjoy what I do, and I'm very passionate about it. Being in the time zone that I'm in, I have the opportunity every day to witness the single most exciting thing that happens on a daily basis. The opening of the American stock market. Watching trillions of dollars move around within tens of thousands of companies that anybody can buy in real time is one of the single most exciting things I can imagine. But it's not quite fitting for the pace of a retirement planner. I wanted a stock ticker that had more to it than just numbers in your face. I wanted something with some personality, something that made me excited to see how the markets were doing. That's when it hit me. A stock ticker that tells you the price by giving you a little snack. My very first thought was to have it dispense candy when the market was up, and peanuts are something that I didn't really get excited about when the market was down. I eventually decided against this though, partially for simplicity's sake, and partially because I'm not going to partition off precious desk space for a legume that is mid at best. So then I thought, okay, well what about gumballs? A screen shows you the price, and if the market is up, it gives you a green gumball, and if it's down, a red one. I still think this is a decent idea, but the main reason I changed it to M&Ms was because of a suggestion that my wife gave me. She said, I got to work measuring M&Ms and designing a dispensing mechanism based on that of a gumball machine so that it could measure out and drop exact numbers of M&Ms. I designed the entire project around M&Ms only to find out that for the amount of M&Ms I would need for this project, it would cost $300. The Mars Candy Company did not respond to my sponsorship request. Luckily though, the innovative nature of capitalism was there to save me. As it turned out, the Hershey Candy Company had a product that appeared to be the exact same size, taste, shape, and color as Mars's M&Ms. So I ordered some and prayed that they were similar enough for everything to work because by this point I had already sent off for the parts. PCB Way manufactured everything for this project for me. Most people already know PCB Way for their high quality, quick turnaround circuit board manufacturing, but did you know that PCB Way also has extremely high quality 3D printing and CNC services? They also have super high quality metal 3D printing at a price that doesn't break the bank. If you're looking for fast, high quality parts from a reputable supplier, PCB Way is your new best friend. Their sales representatives are top notch, and I especially appreciate the work that they do for the maker community, myself included. <laughs> Am I the only one that just loves the way that factories smell? Okay, I love it. Yeah. As I mentioned, this was the very first project where I had to design every single part to work together perfectly on the first try. No stress, right? I started by attaching the motors onto this plate-like part that also serves as the lid for the electronics box. I attached the friction fit drive gears onto the motor shafts and I pressed the bearings into the candy revolvers and I got some washers ready. Off camera, I attached the chute to the plate with two M3 screws and once that was all done, I could use three 5 16 bolts to awkwardly sandwich everything together. The same bolts that keep the part together also serve as the shaft for the bearings. The chute that the M&Ms come out of was designed to fit magnets. This allowed me to change the chute output if I decided I didn't really like this fountain looking one, and it also allows for the M&M receptacle to be easily attached and detached to pour the M&Ms or to walk around while eating them. One pocket on each revolver has a little bite taken out of it, where an Allen key can be inserted to attach the front of the electronics box onto the plate, which I then did after heat pressing four M3 knurled nuts into the four corners of the electronics box. Surprisingly, mechanically, it's pretty close to done. I've got just about everything in the place it needs to be, but the most stressful part of this project is about to happen, and that is, I saw people online say that they're pretty much the exact same size, but there is a small chance that they don't work at all, and that would make me feel very sad. I can already tell, just by looking at it, that it's gonna be close, though. Hopefully none of these get clogged. One already is, that's really sad. Wow, that's depressing. I could just add a washer to give it a little bit more space and then do a little bit more gentle persuasion with my drill. I wonder if that would make sure that they fit. It worked a lot better after adding the extra washers. The other thing that helped a ton was after I put on my food preparation gloves and started the arduous process of sorting five pounds of candy by hand, I made sure to remove all the awkwardly large and deformed pieces of which there was a surprising amount. That completed the mechanical assembly, and all that was left after that was the electronics. After choosing what color I wanted for the button, I put it in the lid piece and started soldering all the headers. I have a crippling compulsion for reusability, so I always ensure parts are socketed rather than soldered directly in. I soldered in headers for the motor drivers, poured myself a little bevy, and then soldered their voltage regulator backwards and didn't notice until hours of troubleshooting later. Then I soldered wire headers for the motors, headers for an ESP8266 microcontroller, and headers to plug the 1602 LCD screen into. 
If you want to learn more about how to drive a stepper motor with a microcontroller, you know I have a video all about that. I made a bit of a mistake on the board as far as the button was concerned though. I made a 2 pin port, 1 to digital and 1 to ground, but I still needed the 3.3 volt signal so I just soldered a fly wire to the top of the board and I wired the 4 pins of the button up like so. There were a couple of small mistakes like this that I've fixed between ordering these parts and publishing the files for free, so when you do this, yours will be slightly different and a lot better labeled. The wires for the button and the screen need to be long enough to feed up through the hole and into where the button and screen go, so I cut off a generous amount of jumper wire and got to soldering. All in all, the hardware, electronic and otherwise, was probably a combined 12 hours of work to put together, although it could probably be made to be a lot faster if I was willing to sacrifice boards and modules. After finally hooking everything up and plugging in the motors, I was ready for a feature complete test. All right, moment of truth. It should be functionally, unless I'm forgetting something, it should be totally functional now. It is making a really soft hum though, and I wonder what's causing that. I'm almost certain it's coming from the stepper motors, but I'm not sure what to, uh, what to do about that. Oh, I guess they have an enable pin. Yeah, I should just hook that up to a digital output. Oh, I have to take the whole thing apart again. And then I took the whole thing apart again. All right, moment of truth. You know what? Let me put a couple of these uh, M&Ms in there. All right, please work. Oh, they went. They're going the long way around, huh? All right, third time's the charm. Oh. Sounds like something got stuck. Oh, there he is. Oh, he must have, did he get stuck in the pipes? That was interesting. It's working surprisingly well. I was really worried they were gonna get caught in the revolvers. So far, so good. So serendipitously, I just got back from work and like manna from heaven, we've been given a volatile market day. S&P 500 is down about 1.2%. Today is October 3rd, 2023. Or at least that's how much I think the S&P is down. But luckily I've got this beautiful stock ticker. I finally finished separating out all the M&Ms. Put a little bit more in than I have previously just to test to make sure these motors have enough torque to push those M&Ms out of the way even if one gets kind of wedged down in there. So press the button. I hope they don't spray out. Wow, let's see how we did on precision. One of them spilled off the tray and uh, trying not to touch them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Ah, I'm so happy. Wow, so you know what that means. Next step is to get the entire tube on here and put all of the M&Ms in. I've got the M&M machine in the back seat to go show off and set up at work. And coincidentally, it's my birthday. So finishing this project and putting it at my desk is like a little, it's like a little present to myself. Hopefully the other present is that the market will be down or up like 5% so that I can get a lot of M&Ms. <laughs>